So if you had two people of equal body mass, but one having more fat, one having more muscle, but otherwise the same, and that's a big difference though, I know, they eat the same amount of carbs. The guy with more muscle is going to have his glucose curve come up and down, and it'll be back down to normal in an hour, maybe 90 minutes. The person who has less muscle, even more fat, so same body mass, there, it's going to take much, much longer for that glucose to come down and thus it take longer for the insulin to come down because muscle is the main place where insulin is going to escort the glucose to. And it does so very well. If So the more muscle mass a person has, the more sort of metabolic wiggle room they have to clear that glucose. And then the more carbs they can eat, as much as I really point the finger at carbs as a primary problem, the more they can eat. And even to the point where if a person's very active, I knew a guy who was training for a marathon, he would eat over 200 grams of carbs per day and still be in deep ketosis the next morning. Mm -hmm. You would think, well, no, normally a ketogenic diet is no more than 50 grams. Well, unless you're just burning that glucose. Right. And, and also you, you mentioned <clears throat> this, this study that was comparing strength training to, yes. to the you know, low Aerobic. carb. Right. Well, I think also high intensity interval training when you're doing you know, there's, there's a lot of work on, so we're talking about how exercise can improve metabolic health. And I think it is a really important um, le lever to pull here because you, you're, you're activating these GLUT4 transporters mm -hmm. 